Christina's Ghost, Chapter 9, A Faint Smiling Figure. Why does a tall man eat less than a short one? Chris sat at the end of the pier and read the riddle in a loud voice. She flipped to the back of her paperback for the answer, because he makes a little go a long way. She twisted around, hoping to catch sight of little Russell Charles, but the shore was deserted. Why does a spider spin a web? She paused. Because she can't knit. knit. She giggled at the idea of a spider with eight knitting needles trying to, to knit a sweater. And suddenly, Russell was there. A faint, smiling figure under a tall birch. Almost at once, he was gone. But Chris was thrilled. She'd made him appear. Her laughter had brought him. Poor little kid. He'd had nobody to laugh with for years and years. She started back to the house. On the way, she picked some of the feathery blue flowers that grew in the tall grass edging the lawn. If she was going to bring sunshine into Uncle Ralph's life, flowers might help. The table was set. The blue bouquet, peanut butter jelly, bread, tall glasses of milk. When Uncle Ralph came out of the study, he grunted, sat down, and he opened his book. What do you think is worse than finding a juicy green worm in an apple? Uncle Ralph, Chris had a paperback open on her lap. Uncle Ralph looked up. What kind of question is that? It's a riddle, Chris explained. You're supposed to guess the answer. He thought for a minute, then shrugged. I have no idea, Christina. Riddles aren't my thing. Sorry. He went back to his book. Half a worm, Chris said. He looked up again. Half a worm what? Well, it's worse if you find a half a worm in your apple than to find a whole one. If you find a half a one, it means that you... <laughs> Uncle Ralph groaned, yes, yes, I see what it means. Please don't explain. Chris didn't mind the groan. Everybody groaned at riddles. She glanced down at the paperback again. Which is the left side of a round coconut cake? Now Uncle Ralph shook his head impatiently. I told you, riddles are not my thing. And I'd like, really like to finish this chapter if it's okay with you. He began reading without waiting for a reply. Chris's face felt hot. She made a double-decker peanut butter sandwich with jelly and ate it fast. Bringing sunshine into Uncle Ralph's life was a real pain. She was leaving the kitchen when Uncle Ralph closed his book. He gestured the jelly glass bouquet. You'd better throw out those weeds, Christina. They'll soon start to smell. Weeds? She saw that the blue flowers had closed up tight in the last few minutes, leaving nothing, or nothing but a cluster of stems. She grabbed the glass and emptied it out the back door, wishing that she could punch someone. She muttered to herself most of the afternoon and took a long swim to the point and back without stopping to make her feel better. Let Uncle Ralph have his stuffy book, she decided. Let him have his Mr. Sourpuss for the rest of his life if that was what he wanted. Grandma would have to understand that she'd tried and she failed. But then Uncle Ralph surprised her. Well, he said that evening as they sat down to canned chili, which is it? Which is what? Which is the left side of a round coconut cake? She, oh, Chris wrinkled her nose. You don't care, she said. You really don't wanna know. Well, you're right on the first point. You're wrong on the second, Uncle Ralph told her. I don't care, and yet I do want you to tell me. I kept thinking about it all afternoon when my mind should have been on my paper. It was annoying. It was like a mosquito buzzing around and around when I was trying to work. Well, Chris said reluctantly, it's the part of the cake you haven't eaten yet. See, if it isn't eaten, it's left. Stop! He shook his head. Don't explain! But he was smiling. And even though he kept his eyes on his book during the rest of the meal, Chris felt better. A smile was something. I'll make lunch tomorrow, she offered. She'd seen a bottle of maple syrup in Uncle Ralph's shopping cart, so there must be a pancake mix in there too. Pancakes, that should be easy. But when she went to the kitchen the next noon, there was no mix. See, she searched the cupboards, finally deciding she'd have to make the pancakes her mother's way. 
She put some flour into a bowl. She added some milk. Then she broke an egg into the mixture. What else? She was pretty sure mother added other things, but she couldn't remember what they were. Maybe a little sugar for flavor, she decided. The batter was the right thickness and the right color. Chris put the skillet on the stove and dropped a big dollop of butter. Just wait till he sees this, she thought, as the butter sputtered and browned. He thinks I don't know how to make anything but trouble. When Uncle Ralph came out to the kitchen a few minutes later, she was just lifting the last pancake to the platter. Because he was watching, she gave it a little extra flip. Well, the pancake flew through the air and it landed on the floor. Before he could stop himself, Uncle Ralph had stepped on it. He slid to one knee. What's this, he grumbled. He picked up the punk pancake as if it were a dead mouse. Chris stared. The pancake that he stepped on? was undamaged. There wasn't even a dent where Uncle Ralph had stepped on it. It's a, it, it's a pancake, she mumbled. A surprise. Uncle Ralph sat down, his eyes on the platter heaped with pancakes. Well, that was a nice thought, he said, sounding strained. They may be a little bit stiff, Chris said, but if you use lots of butter and lots of syrup, she gulped. Here, I'll show you. She put a pancake on her plate. She dropped a pat of butter on it, and she poured a ton of maple syrup. Like this, she said, and then she took a big, dripping bite. Ugh! The pancake was like leather in her mouth. Watching her expression, Uncle Ralph began to laugh. He went on laughing while she chewed and chewed. Give up, Christina, he advised when he, had, he could catch his breath. It isn't going down. Chris ran to the sink and spit out the pancake. When she looked up, Russell Charles was at the window. He smiled at them, and then he was gone. Chris whirled. Did, did you see, she asked. Did, did you see him, Uncle Ralph? See whom, Uncle Ralph said. Is this another riddle? Chris opened her mouth, and then she closed it. Uncle Ralph was still chuckling, but his smile would fade in a hurry if she told him a ghost had been enjoying his laughter. It's not a riddle, she said. I'm sorry about the pancakes. Uncle Ralph went to the refrigerator. Well, how about French toast, he asked. As long as the syrup's on the table. Okay. Chris watched the window, but Russell didn't return. She dumped the pancakes into the garbage can while Uncle Ralph mixed eggs and milk for the French toast. Maybe I just threw away a great invention, she said when they turned, returned to the table. Those can pancakes might have been terrific for patching old shoes or for fixing holes in a roof. To her amazement, Uncle Ralph leaned across the table and patted her arm. You're a good sport, Christina, he said. I'm sorry I laughed, but it was funny, the look on your face. She could have told him it was worth making the world's worst pancakes if they made him laugh out loud, but she didn't say it. Bringing sunshine into another person's life was tricky enough without that person knowing that you were up to trying.